Hey about Thomas here, and today we are not cutting that cedar log yet. First things first, we're gonna do something I've been wanting to work on for a while here. We're gonna go ahead and install a solenoid valve kit for our water delivery system. And what we have right here, my buddy, Mr. Brad, did this up in Tennessee. Uh, my dad's mill, it worked out perfectly. We've got our solenoid valve right here. He made like this little, little bracket, if you will. Uh, we're gonna mount that onto the sawmill. We've got all the cabling we need. He's already done all the connections, so it should be pretty much a quick and easy plug and play type of situation. So I'm gonna figure out what tools I need. I know I need a, uh, a drill. I need to drill through the plate and everything so I can make some, put some screws on this. And then for the time being though, I think I can actually use this uh, clamp right here just to hold it in place until I find out the exact location where I want to mount this. And I'll figure out a good location for y'all as well. Uh, we have all of our um, connection here. This is going to be running from the switch to the clutch. Actually, yeah. And I think we have everything we need here. So let me let me brainstorm a little bit because this is you're seeing this as I do this, and we'll see what happens. Okay. So first things first, locate your clutch connection here on the mill. So I am, as you see, at the top of the head and everything. Here's your electric clutch right here, and I've already taken off all the electrical tape and everything, but if you actually see, this is coming from your clutch switch and everything. It's just a standard size connector and everything, and it actually plugs into this little uh, wiring harness here. The blue one right here has the, the black line with the blue um, end here. That's your ground. This is your power. And once that's identified, you, again, you take off the the tape and everything and now I want to make a connection where I don't tie into anything that's already I don't want to cut into anything here so some of you are going to laugh at me what I came up with but I think it'll work I think it's gonna work very well so you can see you've got a flat connection here and then you've got a um, the female connector on this side here so male to female and I need to bring another line into there so I'm going to show you what I came up with okay so what I did is I actually in my shop had my granddad's old electrical box just a whole lot of weird type of connectors and stuff like that. You've got your solenoid valve right here. Your black will be your neutral and your red's going to be your hot and everything. So we need to go the black to the frame of the sawmill. And I've got a location where I'm going to put that and I'm going to connect it with this right here. And then the red is what we actually need to have to go to the clutch itself. Now we know we have on the one side, it's a male connector to a female connector but I need to also have a connection to this and I don't want to cut into anything. So this is what I came up with. It's like a weird three-way right here. So we have our female connector here. So the male connector that's coming off of the clutch itself will plug into here. And then this will plug into uh, the actual clutch itself. And then this right here will power back to my red over here. So I'll, I'll plug the red into that one right there. And that should work. Um, Nothing fancy. This I had these uh, circular, like almost like battery type terminal ones. I had this little uh, bolt and nut combination with two washers. So sandwiched it in there. That way there's no cutting of any wire on the sawmill because I didn't want to do that in case I need to take it off or for whatever reason. It should be quick and easy. Just do quick disconnects and everything. And if this works out really well, then I'll come up with a better securing method than this. But again, didn't want to cut anything i think that turned out pretty well so let's go ahead and hook it up and we'll show the routing and again this section right here that's about three feet i did about three feet because all i need to do is go from the clutch itself to where i'm going to mount the solenoid so wait one okay so as you can see we've made our connection here again coming from the clutch switch plugs in the male to the female then it goes through and then plugs into the actual clutch itself and then our tag in there is going to go down below to where the solenoid's at. Now, I'm going to have to come back here and put electrical tape on here, but nothing right now is touching. And I want to show you how you can test to see if this is working, even with the sawmill off. I just need to have the key in the run position on the diesel model. The gas model might be slightly different, but we can also test it by flipping the clutch. We'll, we'll hear the actual clutch engage, hear like a, a click noise, and then we'll see if water's flowing. And then that'll be a good test. Once I know everything tests out, 
uh, properly, then I'll come back here and tape all this up so we don't get to a shorting situation. Because if these were to touch, you would short out, and that would be no bueno. So let's go down below. We'll see where we're going to actually hook up the solenoid on the frame itself. And you need to make sure you're going to be lower than your tank, otherwise you won't get proper flow going through. Stay tuned. Okay, so now you can see we have roughly mounted on here. I'm just using this clip for right now because I want to find a location that will make sure it's not going to be inside of our quote-unquote cut box. And as you can see, everything is still clear in there. I don't have anything in the way. I think it's tucked enough in, up in there. And also you can see it is in fact lower than my tank. You want to make sure you have a little bit of head above that. You don't have to have a ton, but you just want a little bit. A, a little bit. And you will have more head down below. You'll have, um, you know, because your outfeed's going to be there. But again, if you get a bubble in there, you don't want this. If this is higher, if you had a bubble in there, it might cause it where it wouldn't work. And I did ask my buddy, I said, does it matter on the orientation of this uh, solenoid? He said it doesn't. So we're going to try it each way. I, I, th I think this is the correct way because he, he did put an arrow flow on here, the direction of the flow of, of fluid. But if we have it in this down direction here, I'm trying to think of what could be an issue. The only thing I could think of is if you get water collecting inside of there. And if I if that's the case, then I'd flip this to the inside. Yeah, let me see what that looks like too. Okay, so after doing that, I actually think I like it better on the inside here. Um, as you can see, I still have a little bit of the plate sticking down below. But it's tucked in there pretty well. You can't see it. And I'm not getting a lot of, you know, flex and vibration out of that. And I don't think I'm going to run the issue of water collecting inside that cap. That would be an issue if that was the case. So, sure, we're going to try this orientation right here. And as you can see, my flow direction looks correct. It'll go down to the actual uh, drip nozzle there. But yeah, that's where I'm going to go ahead and try it out. So let's go ahead and make a few of these connections here. And I'm going to ground off to, well, heck, I can ground off. I'm not going to ground to the frame of the engine. I'll ground to right here. Okay, so we've made our connection now, as you can see, got on there. I went ahead and put this just on here, just as some extra in case I want to change the connection somewhere else. Because this is all still trial and error for me right now. Um, our next step is, before we do any testing, we got to make sure we get the hose length to the correct size and note that the saw head and the tank are traveling at the same uh, so as you bring the saw head up of course the tank comes up so you don't have to have a ton of slack in there i'll probably do something about like that this nice little dip there something where i can see maybe some water flow going through there or something like that um, and again getting the exact positioning of this this uh, valve right here, I'll have, it's kind of right here by where this um, bar comes through, but I think I can be right underneath of it. Yeah, I can get right up underneath there. And then, again, I'll come back and I'll clean up and maybe put this in some uh, electrical tape and clean it all up so it looks nice and, you know, pretty. So, all right, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and cut the pipe. Okay, so one other thing I just realized, and I was just testing this and everything, got to make sure you leave yourself enough room... So when this rolls over, your pipe still reaches. Thank goodness I left myself literally like a little bit of room. Not much. All right. So the trick to show whether or not um, this is going to work and everything. Now, I just had to bleed out. So it will take a second to get the air out of the line and everything. But I've got it charged up right now. And I'll show you how to actually show this working without turning on the sawmill. So... I'm going to go ahead, so the sawmill is in the, or the, the key position in the off position, turn the clutch on. And I'm just going to turn the key on. I'm just going to let the fuel pump run for a second. And if you saw that, as soon as I hit that clutch, my water started going. So that works pretty well. So again, I'm just going to hit the start button just for a second. And you can hear both the clutch and the solenoid kick on. So I know now when I engage the clutch, it will work. So I call that a success. Now let's go ahead and mount everything kind of where it needs to be. And I need to put the electrical tape around some stuff. But I know all my connections are working because once I turn that on, I'm getting flow down to where it needs to be. 
and I think this is gonna be awesome. Now all I have to do is throttle my my needle valve right here, my little ball valve that I have. You could go right off of this valve here. There was one that came with Timber King, but I wore that thing out long ago. So without further ado, I'm gonna go up there, do all my electrical uh, cleanup work and everything, and then we're gonna do a test run in the cedar, see if it works, stay tuned. All right, folks, without further ado, I just have that uh, held on there with that clip, but I think that should be fine. I'm just gonna make one cut right now, see how she works. Yep, water is flowing, so that's a big plus. Not having to go up there and pull with this really nice. Let's go and make a cut. Uh, this has been something I've been wanting to do for a while and not having to fool with that water anymore is gonna be glorious because after running my dad's mill a few times like that it's just absolutely awesome not having to go up there you just adjust it one time in the beginning of the day and then you just cut and it will you'll save so much water or cutting fluid whatever you're using okay so the only thing that I'm missing is just to come through here and put two uh, screws bolts, nuts, and washers and everything just to hold it on there permanently. But I'm very happy with the location there. It's tucked in. It's out of my cutting box, if you will. Just make sure you leave enough of this hose right here so that when you slide your arm all the way over, uh, you've got enough room there. And you also want to make sure that you're mounting this solenoid lower than your tank just so you can, you know, get the fluid. If you ever get like an air bubble in there, you want to make sure it's lower so it can, you know, self-siphon. Uh, also, my buddy's going to be throwing together like a little kit of this stuff and everything with all the pieces and parts. Um, he also has in there a, a little, uh, what do you call it, like a, a barb hose and everything. Three-eighths inch, that's what size of the piping it is and everything. In case something does go wrong with the solenoid, it doesn't leave you high and dry. With that little connection there, you can still bypass the solenoid and everything if you need to and, and run water uh, as as much as you like through the, the valve, but he also has a few pieces of parts that are going there uh, Some wire to whatever length based on whatever type of mill, but really all I needed was three foot of wire there I needed just a few connections, which I showed you in the video and everything literally took me 20 minutes maybe and that's with me actually going back and forth to take this bolt and nut off It's a 9 16 or anything, but really very quick and easy no cutting or splicing into the actual installed equipment. So everything is kind of quote unquote quick disconnect. I can always take this off whenever I want to, if I want to move this to my next mill, but really this is, this is a nice selling point if I want to sell this mill later down the road, which I am, but it's gonna be a while, not until I get my new one in hand. But anyways, uh, everything's quick disconnect, so there's nothing that's, that's permanent if, if that was an issue with anyone. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this quick little video where we just went over and showed the installation of this uh, solenoid valve. Now, I also have another valve I was gonna try out too. This is a solenoid valve. And the solenoid valve, over time, as it holds that open, you will get some heat buildup. And there's been discussions about that and the longevity and how long they last. Well, I also have a mechanical ball valve that I want to try as well. And I might do that some other later date or maybe install that in the next mill and try that out. So again, please like, subscribe. Hope you enjoy this channel. Uh, if you want to see more things like this, the, the other thing, my dad has a laser on his sawmill. Uh, that's pretty cool. Right here where I have my cant chart and everything, he's got a laser set up here. And it does a pretty good job of shooting down the length of the log. It's really good for your first and second cuts. Everything else after that, we're already on computer, so it really doesn't matter. But uh, just helpful things from the sawmill. And there's a few other ads that we're going to be doing 
uh, and upgrades and I'll put this on the channel. So stay tuned. Please like, subscribe. We'll see you around. Thanks.